It's such a blessing to be able to hear the word. There's nothing more important than the word of God. We ask that you get your Bible and prepare your heart and your mind to receive the word of God. For truly God have a word for you on today. You're not here by chance, but it was preordained from the foundation of the world that you should be here to hear the man of God. And we're gonna bring to the podium none other than our own pastor, District Elder Alan Julian. Let's say praise the Lord as he comes. And the praise the Lord to all of you. It is good to be in the house of God. And being here, it's good to know that God is working on people like you and I. He is building us to make of us a people for his name. Yeah. Did you know he wants to make a people for his name? Yeah. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, to look around and see my brothers and sisters coming together to worship in the house of God. Hallelujah. And uh, don't look around and say, well, I'm waiting for somebody to do something. You do something. Hallelujah. If nobody praises him, you ought to praise him while you're in here. Hallelujah. He's a great God. And because he's so great, I need to praise him for the good things he does for me. You ought to praise him for the things he does for you. And together we can praise him for what he does for us. For in him we live and move and have our being. But I do want to talk this morning in regards to built by God. Built by God. You know, you sometimes you see things in the world and it says built by Ford or built by whatever name it is. Hallelujah, even on buses, there's the name built by. And with all this in mind, we are being built up an holy house for the living God. Is that not correct? Amen? At this time, I'd like to have you turn with me into the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter number 42, and that will be the only chapter you will have to have in your hand. Though I may make reference, I don't know offhand. I think this is the only place I'll need to speak to you. But I want to be talking this morning about built by God. If you are in a mess, he can build you up. If you're in sin, he can build you up. If you're broken hearted, he can build you you up. I, I want you to understand we're going to be talking about being built up. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and we are in the right place to be worked upon because we are in God's house. Here in chapter number 42 of the book of Jeremiah, and this is a little bit of a lengthy reading perhaps uh, because I'm going to read a few verses to make it possible for you to see what I'm talking about. I'm going to pick up with, starting with verse number 2, and said unto Jeremiah the prophet, Let me beseech thee, uh, our supplication be accepted before thee, and uh, pray for us uh, unto the Lord thy God, even for all this remnant. For we are left uh, but a few of many, as thine eyes do behold us, that the Lord thy God may show us the way that the Lord may show us, or thy God, the Lord thy God may show us the way, not ways, the way, wherein we may walk, and the thing that we may do. Drop down to verse number 9. And he said unto them, this is Jeremiah's answer, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, unto whom ye sent me to present your supplication before him. If ye will still abide in this land, then will I build you and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I repent to me of the evil that I have done unto you. Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. 
and I will show mercies unto you that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. Now, let me go to the last portion. These verses to me are a little separated in general of the thought, but yet connected. Verse 13, But if ye say, We will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God, saying, No, but we will go into the land of Egypt, where we uh, shall see no war, uh, nor hear the sound of the trumpet, uh, nor have hunger of bread, and there will be or there will we dwell. And now, therefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if ye uh, wholly set your face to enter into Egypt uh, and go to sojourn there, uh, then uh, it shall come to pass that the sword uh, which ye feared uh, shall overtake you uh, uh, there in the land uh, of Egypt uh, and the famine uh, whereof ye were afraid uh, shall follow close after you uh, there in Egypt uh, and there ye shall die uh, so shall it be uh, with all the men that set their faces uh, to go into Egypt uh, to sojourn there uh, they shall die by the sword uh, by the famine uh, by the pestilence uh, and none of them uh, shall remain uh, or escape uh, from the evil that I bring upon them. Thou gracious Lord God and Heavenly Father, we look unto thee today for thy help and for thy blessing, that thou would bless the word of God in our eyes and in our ears and in our hearts, that we might, my God, never return to Egypt, but that we might stand in the good ground and wait upon the Lord. My God, Father, that thy will and thy purpose would be done in the hearts of thy people. Lord, that we might wait on the Lord and be of good courage uh, that you might strengthen our hearts. Uh, oh, Father, uh, accomplish your work in us today. Uh, we'll be thankful for the help that you bring uh, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want you to understand with me today, and I'll try to turn this thing on, I guess, Bill. Is it on now? All right. And uh, with this in mind today, I'm thankful that the Lord didn't just bring us out, but he wants to help us while we're in his land. Now, one of the things that was in the hearts sometimes of the people of God in those early days, uh, though the Lord had been gracious to them uh, and had brought them a long ways, uh, we see in the hearts of Judah that they had been a large number of people, but somewhere their numbers had decreased uh, and uh, they were certainly in line uh, of uh, uh, thinking about the needs that they had uh, and went to a prophet of God by the name of Jeremiah uh, to plead on their behalf and to get an answer from God. Uh, now that they were out, uh, hallelujah, in this place, and they had a supplication, uh, and uh, they wanted Jeremiah to pray and take it uh, before the great God and he did so and he, he went and he spoke on their behalf uh, but we understand that they felt there were only few uh, in number at that particular time uh, and they said uh, uh, evidently in the way they talked it's evident you can just look at us and see we don't have the numbers we used to have uh, that the Lord uh, thy God may show us the way uh, I want you to know we don't find the way unless God shows us the way. It was necessary for them while they were in their struggles to understand that the Lord was willing to show them the way. While we're going through the struggles in this life, sometimes we need God to show us the way, not a way. We got all kinds of ways. There's so many ways available today that it's confusing to many people. People. But the way is a special thing. It's something that God gives to us. The way in which we ought to walk. The way in which we ought to serve him. In the way 
that is pleasing uh, in the eyes uh, and in the ways of God. Uh, and they were looking for a man of God to cry out uh, on their behalf, uh, on their purpose, uh, whereby God would show them uh, the way oh, in the midst of the things that we see in this life today I also understand that there are many ways that people live many ways that they go in the uh, desire of their lives but there is a way that is special it's the way of the Lord and sometimes we may think there's not much space here and maybe I ought to go someplace else and I want to make it clear uh, once God has brought you out of the Egypt of sin uh, he doesn't expect you to go back into it uh, and even if you stray uh, he strives to bring you back within the fold uh, and I want you to see here uh, we need God to show us uh, the way uh, and if you will allow me to put some other words on it to help you understand that we might see and know his way there is a way uh, that seemeth right unto a man, uh, but the Bible said uh, that that way uh, is a way of death. Uh, it is a way that is not healthy. Uh, man uh, cannot, uh, as it were, uh, put his steps aright uh, on his own. Uh, we need somebody to help us. Uh, these men were wise enough to understand uh, if there be a man of God, uh, and they had one by the name of Jeremiah, uh, they went to Jeremiah uh, and asked God to plead uh, or to plead to God for them on their behalf uh, whereby they might know the way uh, that they were supposed to walk in. Uh, don't you know all of us uh, have a life uh, that is somewhat separate uh, to ourselves. Uh, I have a personal salvation. Uh, I must walk before God uh, and serve Him in a way that's pleasing to God. Uh, now you are in the same church but you can't walk in my shoes I need to know the way for myself that I can walk in the will and the purpose of God so I need God to show me the way and you need God to show you the way evangelist Elkins each person must know by the help of God how to serve God so they were looking for the man of God to plead on their behalf and we see uh, when he picked up uh, down in verse number uh, 9 where we were talking uh, and said unto them, Thus saith the Lord, uh, the God of Israel unto whom uh, ye sent me to present your supplication. Uh, he's telling them, I did what you asked me to do. Now here's the answer. And in verse number 10, if you still have it open, if, uh, if, uh, he started out with an if. How many of you like ifs? I'll tell you what. If all this works out, I will help you. That if has already brought some questions in your mind. Is that not right? Uh-huh. Uh, I've got uh, $300 I'm going to give you if. Now, now you're waiting on the if. And that if is a questionable thing. Is that right? If you will do this, I will do that. Uh, there's a lot of things about an if that makes it a little difficult. And sometimes we trip on the ifs. But these people wanted an answer. Uh, and the answer came back from God by Jeremiah. If ye will still abide in this land. Lord, help me. If you see button fall off it's because it's wobbling <laughs> well, I'm going to preach don't let it bother you I won't let it stop me and understanding that if they would abide in the land that's where he starts the subject now and this is the word from God to uh, the uh, children of God that we know as the the Judah tribe and when indeed he starts us, he said, if you will dwell in the land. Now, God has brought us out of sin. We were too in a wilderness of sin until God brought us out. 
And when he brought us out, he saved us and he gave us a new place to live. uh, And that is to live uh, in the ways of God rather than living uh, in the world of Egypt. Though I'm still living in the world, I'm not living in the world. You, You get the picture. I'm still on planet earth, but I'm not doing like every earthling. Hallelujah. He saved me and brought me into the house of God. He brought me into his own family. He gave me a better place to dwell. He asks us, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith God, and I will be your father and you can be my sons and daughters if you would. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not trying to get everything together just exactly right. I'm not quoting. I'm simply telling you what he was talking about. God asked you to come out of sin that you might live in the perimeters of the children of God in what is called the church of the living God. And God loves us and he takes good care of us in here. He feeds us on the finest of the wheat. God doesn't give us junk food. God gives us things that are good for us to make us spiritually healthy. If we will eat what God gives us, we will gain in strength as we go. And he brought this to their attention. If you will stay in this land. Where were they? They were in the place where God wanted them to be. And if they would get upset, they could go off and go back to Egypt. Over and over we see this in the scripture. Where people seem to have this idea when things isn't going well. Well, we can go back to Egypt. But he plainly told what would happen if they went back into Egypt. Watch this now. Please bear it in mind. I know we're saints and living in this day. But there's still an Egypt of sin that God brought us out of. And if we go back into that. Watch and hear me. What he was saying. It was God's word to the people. Ah, If ye will still abide in this land. Then will I build you and not pull you down uh, and I will plant you uh, and not pluck you up uh, for I uh, repent me uh, of the evil that I have done unto you. Uh, Listen uh, sometimes God allows uh, some things to come on us uh, but if indeed uh, we are in the right frame of mind uh, we get our heart right uh, God will come and deal with us uh, and Judah uh, had got their head straightened out a little bit uh, and called for the prophet of God uh, and asked him to go uh, before God on their behalf. Uh, And as Jeremiah cried out to God, uh, God began to feed to Jeremiah uh, the answer that he needed to tell the people. uh, Look, uh, if you'll stay in the land uh, where I want you to be, uh, I'll repent of the things uh, that I've been doing to you. Uh, They were afraid uh, that an enemy was going to come in and destroy them further. Uh, But God said, if you will stay in the land if you will stay in the land Lord help us to stay in the land where God puts us that we might be separated from the horrors that can take place so he said if you will stay in the land I won't tear you down but I'm going to build you up I'm not going to destroy you I'm going to make you stronger I'm going to build upon you I'll make you to rise up in the glory and the wonder of God helps oh how God wants to help us uh, but sometimes uh, we won't stay in the land Mm, no no no. I'm going to talk to this side Uh, sometimes God would build us up uh, but we won't stay in the land maybe it's a middle section God wants to build us up If we stay in the land. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust old Egypt. Oh No, no, that isn't what the songwriter said, was it? I dare not trust the sweetest frame. I don't care how sweet the world looks. It's a place to die. When I was in Egypt, I was dead in my trespasses and sins. 
I was dead in my... I hope you'll hear me this morning. I'm trying to get us to see what I'm talking about. I know I'm preaching out of the Old Testament, but the Old Testament is a pattern by which we can see ourselves uh, and adjust our lives uh, to fit within the framework of God. God hasn't changed. He's still the same God that told them what he would do. He's the same God that's ready to do these things for us. Uh, but if I want God to help me, I got to stay in the land. Uh, I got to stay where he put me. Ha, hallelujah. Ha, I'm going to tell you, if I planted a garden uh, and all my corn when it come up uh, and was about ready to ear uh, decided I'm going to march across the street and go in another man's cornfield I'm going to have some problems with that corn what about God when he's planted us in the house of God and we decide I'm going to get up and move you have no business moving from where God put you we are his people we're the sheep of his pasture Lord, God, help me this morning. Uh, oh, Lord, uh, talk to us. Uh, I will build you up uh, and not pull you down. Uh, I will plant you uh, and not pluck you up. Look, I'm growing in a fruitful hill. God has given me a good place. Hallelujah. To put down some roots and to draw strength from the Lord. He sent uh, his refreshing rains uh, he's nourished me uh, he's given me what I need uh, to flourish uh, hallelujah in the house of God uh, I would be stupid uh, to say okay I'm going to leave this place I got another place I'm going to go it would be just as stupid as the corn getting out of my patch and all the hoeing that I did and all the watering and all the fertilizing, all the care, making sure that it could grow and then my corn get up and walk out of my garden. Are you with me? Would you put up with that corn? If anything, I might go across the street and chop it all down so it couldn't grow in anybody else's yard. If I won't serve God, could God chop me down? Could God take me down? Hallelujah. But he's saying, if you will stay in the land, I'm going to help you. I'm going to build you up. I'm going to make you what you ought to be. But are you with me now? I want you to see where I'm coming from. He said, be not afraid of the king of Babylon. Now, I know you've been afraid of him. I know he's out there and I know he's got a great big army and you're just a little bit of folk. But watch what God says. He said, be not afraid of him, saith the Lord. I am with you to do what? To save you. If God is with you to save you, who can keep you from being saved? Oh, the devil's on my track. Shut up about the devil. Talk about the Lord. Hallelujah. Look on the positive side. Quit looking at the shadows. Quit looking at this other stuff. Hallelujah. My God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all I can ask or think. Hallelujah. Why should I be afraid? Why should I tremble? Why should I be in a place of confusion when God has chose me to be in this place? I want you to know sometimes uh, we ought to do like David. We ought to talk to our own hearts. We ought to say, hey, hallelujah. If you don't mind, I'll talk about myself. Hey, Alan, what is this thought you got going on in your head? This stuff doesn't line up with the word of God. God said thus and thus and thus. Uh, here I'm fretting and stewing and, oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, what about this and what about that? Listen, God didn't bring us out here uh, to destroy us. Uh, hallelujah. He brought us into a promised place uh, that he might build us up uh, and make us what he wants us to be. Uh, and one of these days he's going to come uh, and he's going to harvest his crop uh, from the earth. Uh, and I want to be in his garden uh, when he comes. Uh, I don't want to be left out. I, I want to be saved. It is important that we understand God's work uh, is to save us. If we don't get in his way, we will be saved. I, I'm going to say that one more time. If we don't get in the way, God will save us. 
Hallelujah. He's the one that called you and brought you in here. Hallelujah. For I am with you, he said, to save you. I didn't bring you over here to cast you away and let you be lost. Hallelujah. You are the one that decides whether you're lost or not. God's already saved. He's drew you. His love has been there for you. He's helped you. Wherever, whatever position you are in the scheme of God, God has blessed you to have knowledge of God. Hallelujah. If you understand the word enough to know I need to be in the house of God, you're already blessed. Hallelujah. If you have a heart that's turned for repentance before God for the things you've done wrong, you're blessed. If you've been baptized in Jesus' name because he gave you revelation to have your sins washed away, you're blessed. If you sought him and he filled your soul with the Holy Ghost, I know you're blessed. Hallelujah. Now I must serve him. I must give my will over to God that he might be my everything. But I can't jump back out and go back into Egypt and expect God to be good to me. Once you've tasted of the good word of God, Anybody with me now? Hallelujah. You're responsible for that good word that he gave you. He gave you knowledge about God. Don't you throw it away. Don't go back out in Egypt and think you're going to get away with something. It won't work. He's telling the people of God through Jeremiah some things. And I think we ought to pay attention. Hallelujah. He went on to say that in verse 12. And I will show mercy unto you that he may have mercy upon you and cause you to return to your own land. Hallelujah. Listen, I'll help you. I'll get you to where you need to be. I'll see to it. I take care of you properly. Isn't that what he's talking about? There are blessed people. There are blessed people. To have a God that cared enough to send them this great message. But I also know there are some first verses that follow this. Where he said, but, uh-oh, if you think if is bad, this one is but if. When somebody says but, I already got a question of what's happening. Well, I'm going to do this for you, but. Or I would do that for you because, or, but, oh, come on with me here. He said, but if ye say, we will not dwell in this land, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God, who would be, you would be surprised. I said, you would be surprised. You would be surprised. The folks who have decided after God had been gracious to them that they were going to go back into Egypt. When God brought Israel out and had them by the Red Sea, they wanted to go back to Egypt and get the cucumbers and the melons and all the stuff. The garlic, the onions, leeks and the watermelons probably, huh? <laughs> All of those things that God could help them with in another place. They weren't to the promised land yet. They were just up against the struggle. The choir sometimes sing a song when you're up against the struggle that shatters all your dreams and your hopes have been cruelly crushed under Satan's manifested schemes. Huh? And we understand God is the one that helps us. He comes by and delivers us. Now that we've been brought out of the Egypt of sin, brought into the house of God, now we've got to watch some of this too. He said, but if ye say, we will not dwell in this land, the land that God gave them, neither obey the voice of the Lord your God. When we refuse to obey God, we're on bad ground. I said, we're on bad ground. 14, saying, no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. 
Oh, I got trouble in the church. So I'm going to go back out into the world. I'm going to go back out into the Egypt, if you would. I want to leave the high ground. I'm going to go back into Egypt because I have some trouble in the church. Lord, God have mercy on us. If you think you got trouble now, I'm going to tell you, when you turn away from God and go back into the world, you're going to find trouble like you've never known before. My Bible plainly tells me that when we turn and go away from God, that there's the enemy that comes by and he finds a house that's all swept and garnished. And he goes back and he gets seven more devils that was worse than the first. Hallelujah. And he brings them in. Now you're seven times worse and maybe eight times worse depending on how you calculate that. Because one devil went out and got seven more and then they moved in. If I couldn't live with one devil, how am I going to live with eight of them? Oh, yeah, no, I'm going to talk to these folk over here. If I can't live with one devil, how am I going to live with seven or eight of them? What are you trying to say, Pastor? You better stay where God put you, and you better keep on. Yes, I know there's trials. I know there's troubles. But I got somebody to call upon. I got somebody that hears my call. I got somebody that loves me. I've got a hope for the time everlasting. I'm not going to be stupid and jump back out into the world when God is holding my hand. He's warning his people. He's warning his people here. Oh, say no, but we will go into the land of Egypt. You know, the, 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 they got parties going on and, and the music and the, and, and the dance and, and, and they got freedom. They don't have to do anything. Don't have to go to church on Sunday, you know. They just go party, go fishing or whatever. But neither do they have the blessings of God. The blessings of God to me, deacon, are greater than what the world has to offer. I've been in the world. I've been there. I've tasted it. I know what it's about. But the power of God has allowed me to be drawn into something better. Yes, when the trial gets heavy, I know there's pain. I know there's heat. I know there's discomfort. But I got somebody who can send the rain. I got somebody that can speak and the storm must cease. I got somebody that can say peace and peace will be still. Hallelujah. The wind must stop. The waves got to lay down. The heat has to be tempered. Hallelujah. The joy and the refreshing of God is our help. Because God is our help. We can make it. If God be with you, he's more than all that can be against you. Do you believe God's word? Well, I believe him when I'm in the church. Why don't you believe him when you're outside the door? Amen. When I'm home, he's the same God when I'm home that he is in the church. If he can see me now, he can see me then. And he can see me when I need him. And bring my deliverance right on time. Hallelujah. Let me go just a little further with this. I'm getting closer to bringing it to the end here. But I want you to see. But we will go into the land of Egypt where we shall see no war. You know, some people think, oh, I'm so tired of fighting over here. If I go back in the world, at least this fight will be over. Yeah, you've lost the whole battle. Uh huh. The war is over because you've surrendered. Surrendering isn't the answer. God told me to fight the good fight of faith. That means when the fight is on, huh? And I've taken a couple of licks. 
Nobody knows what I'm talking about. The devil knows how to hit you with a lick sometimes that will make you sway. Hallelujah. Wonder what's going on. But I got somebody that's greater. Hallelujah. That's sharing the load. I got somebody that can pick me up and hold me till I can stand up again. He's carried me over many places and set my feet down again where I could dance and rejoice in the spirit and the power of God. Where I could run, hallelujah, in the strength that he had given. The refreshing of the Lord comes to us when we're in the heat of the battle. If I'm standing in the right place. If he sends it to the church and you're not in it, you missed your refreshing. The lamp would have worked, but it was disconnected. The faucet could have worked, but the power or the, the water was shut off. You see, sometimes we shut off our own blessings. I said, we shut off our own blessings. Here we've got Judah. They're out there in a place, and they're worried that some enemy is going to overtake them. Oh, Jeremiah, go and plead before the Lord. Take, take our, our, our lamentation or whatever here and present it before the Lord. And the man of God comes back and starts telling them, all you got to do is do what God wants you to do. Stay in the place where he puts you. Stay in the land. And he stood. God is also telling them, not only will I build you up and I'll help you there, but if you leave, if you go back into Egypt, huh, where they're thinking, oh, if I just run out of, out, of Egypt, uh, out of the church now, I just go out into Egypt, then I'm not having to fight this fight. And neither will you ever have the victory. If you're going to win a battle, sometimes you have to stay in there and fight your way through it. How many of you ever been sick and you had to fight Hallelujah, to get well. It seemed like it was a struggle going on. But if you wouldn't have struggled, if you wouldn't have tried to get better, if you would have just given in, maybe you'd have been gone. There's something about somebody that has a will to fight. Sometimes people that have cancer, and they know the prognosis is not good, and there's trouble being affecting even their organs on the inside, but they will not give in to it. They fight, they fight, and they fight against that thing, and sometimes overcome it, because when indeed you have a desire inside to overcome something, and a determination, a mindset it'll help produce more enzymes than you normally would produce so that it fights against that thing that's trying to come against you some people have had cancer and gotten better and lived the rest of their life out in health and strength what are you talking about if trouble uh, comes against you in the house of God. Uh, don't leave the God that has the victory. Uh, don't run back out into the world uh, and allow the world uh, hallelujah to take its toll on you uh, because the blessing is not in the world. It's in the church. All right. Nor hear the sound of trumpet. Oh, I, oh, I heard the trumpet in the house of God so many times. I don't want to hear it anymore. Shame on you. Unless we hear from God, we'll be lost. Nor have hunger of bread. Oh, oh, it's so pitiful. I only got this and I only got that. You ought to go to some countries with me. Lord God, some places it hurts your heart to see how folks are living. I'm telling you, it hurts your heart. There are places that are so pitiful that it's hard to understand. You think, why don't they do something? It's because they can't. Some of them don't even have the will to try. I'm talking about some kind of housing made out of some old pieces of tin fastened together to some kind of piece of wood or maybe fastened off somebody else's shed so that it would help hold it up. 
corrugated metal sometimes. Bits of old pieces of plywood or whatever they can find, the scraps nailed together, dirt floors. No running water. I was in one place in India, in a major city, and just outside the airport grounds, and they were driving us around to get us into the airport, was all these little shacks fastened together, right by where the highway goes around it. And I watched one young lady, it wasn't on purpose, but she was out there taking a shower open to the whole highway. Might have been 12, 13. Living in shambles. And we complain. We complain sometimes with our living conditions. We don't even have conditions compared to some places. People washing their clothes in the river, getting water for the family. And in the same river, they're upstream washing the water buffaloes off. And the water runs by, and over here they're washing their clothes. And then that runs by, and over somebody over here is dipping water to take back to the house. And sometimes we complain, I don't have this and I don't have that. God, make us ashamed. saying, okay, I'll go into the spiritual realm. God has been good to you. He's refreshed you. He's helped you. He's hold, held you. He's healed you. He's inspired you. He's been there in all your situations. Uh, he always uh, has been aware. Uh, he's heard your prayers uh, even when you didn't think he did. Sometimes he answers them and you didn't even really oh, he did it. Why are you surprised? Because you didn't have much faith when you prayed it. And yet God answered anyway. Any, anybody ever have God do something for you and you wasn't even worthy of it? Lord, help us to understand. God has put us in the house of God. He's given us a good land just like he did with the people of God here. The, Jew, uh, the, the Jews were, were complaining. They were struggling. And they were thinking evidently of going back to Egypt because God's dealing with it. Saying, no, but we will go back. We're tired of hearing the trumpet, having hunger for bread, and oh, and there will, there back in Egypt, we'll dwell there. Look, the world holds nothing for me anymore. 15. And now, therefore, he said, hear the word of the Lord, ye remnant of Judah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if ye wholly set your face to enter into Egypt and go to sojourn there, then it shall come to pass that the sword that they've been afraid of now, which ye feared, shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt. Don't think you can run out of God's house and get away from the things you fear. Not going to work. And the famine, whereof ye were afraid, shall follow you into Egypt. And there ye shall what? Die. I don't want to die in Egypt. He brought me out to save me. If I go back into Egypt and die there, I'm lost forever. If I go back into sin, there's no guarantee I can come out. Some people just think, well, if I sin, I'll just go and, and, and confess and, and get it prayed for, and everything's hunky-dory. Hunky -dory. Well, I'm going to tell you, I can pray, and if God doesn't forgive, you still got a problem. I'm not God. I'm a servant trying to help the people. But God is the one that has to forgive. I'm not the forgiver. God is the forgiver. If God doesn't forgive, where's your sin? Still on you. So shall it be with all the men that set their faces to go into Egypt. All the men that set their faces to go into Egypt to sojourn there. They shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, and none of them shall remain or escape from the evil that I will bring upon them. Wait a minute. 
I thought if I went back into Egypt, the devil would just get on me. God said, I will send it to the men in Egypt. God was going to send it there. See, God is an awesome judge. He can save, but if I don't want to be saved, he can also be the destroyer. God's an awesome judge. Do you know in the end, the Lord is going to come and he's going to set up his throne of judgment and he's going to judge every man by his works. Whether they be good or evil, God is just going to judge. He didn't live the life. People live their lives. But God is going to judge every man according to his works. Now that God has been so gracious to bring us into the house of God, let us not be foolish because God wants to build us up. I want to be one of those, hallelujah, and I, I know this isn't going to be something that I actually wear, but I want people to look at me and say, there's somebody built by God. Hmm. I can tell by what is going on in their life. For instance, I can drive down the road and I can maybe see a vehicle and I know Ford made it and I might not know the name that's on the vehicle. Today, they don't display them like they used to. I might not be able to tell you just exactly which model it is, but I can tell it's a Ford. I can say, well, that's a GM-made vehicle there. Oh, it's a Chevy for sure. Little things that tell you what it is. People ought to be able to look in our lives and say, there's one of those Jesus folk. There's one of those saints, hallelujah, they might not even like you, but they know what you are. Because it said, built by God, built by God, built by God. God is building himself a church. I'm glad to be in it. I don't want to be wasted in these last days. I've got to bring this to a close. But I want you to understand this. The house of God has open doors to accept people from Egypt. I said, maybe I better make it clear now. Accepting people to come from sin into a good place, a place where God's love abides and his strength and his power works with us day after day. You don't have to be lost. There's somebody that wants to save you. The music can come at this time. I want you to understand it's God's will to save such as should be saved. It's his will to deal with souls, to encourage hearts, to seek him while they may. For the time is coming when no man is going to be able to work. You can seek the Lord and be found of him today and have this God put you in his care and keep you that you don't have to die in Egypt. There's life and there's power and there's help to search and to seek out the lost. He's willing to save you today. I if you're in him and you've never repented, Jesus we desire that you would repent of your sins. And his blood washes whiter than snow. And you still have your sin upon you. I believe Jesus saved. The Holy Ghost power and his blood washes whiter than snow. You're free already up here. You're welcome to come. I believe. Jesus saved, and his blood washes whiter than snow. He can clean you up. He can make you I believe. Oh, Jesus saved, and his blood washes whiter than snow. It's a blessing to be in the church. I and believe Jesus saved, and his blood washes whiter than snow. Even when 